So you know what? It's gonna happen. When you start putting yourself out on the internet, creating content here on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, wherever the heck you're putting out content, people that you know in real life are gonna talk about you. They are. 112%. I was just recently talking with a friend of mine and he was talking about, you know, like, oh, I wanna do this thing on YouTube or whatever. And he was like, but I have to get to the point where I don't care what people think. And he said, I can literally watch your Instagram stories and tell that you don't care what people think, which is the way I've always been. And he acknowledged that. So I will say that that comes a little bit more naturally to me than like, if you're someone who really cares what people think, right? Um, but I think I have some tips to help you get over that, to help you navigate that, which will inevitably help you be the best you can possibly be as a content creator and do the things and um, make them talk about you in a different way. Let me tell you a few of the things that I have personally heard people say about me as a whole. And you have to remember, I live in a really small town. Like I, we know everybody, everybody knows everybody. It is very much so a, you know, people I went to high school with work with, you know, my mom or like the people that I used to work with are still friends with people who I'm friends with or like everybody is connected. You know that TikTok sound where it's like, everybody is connected to everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. small town, it is like, overly true. And I have been putting out content for going on seven years now. Actually, I guess I've been creating content for way longer than that because I started blogging when I quit my corporate job in 2010 and it was all over the place. Like sometimes I would blog about like life. Sometimes I would blog about my graphic design business. Like, you know, it was, it wasn't a good time, but I've been putting content out on the internet, therefore putting myself out on the internet for a long time. And when you're first getting started, a lot of times, like the first react, I, I think people have like two reactions when they're first getting started or like two like defaults. It's either, I'm gonna tell everybody I know about this. I'm gonna post about it on my personal Facebook. Hopefully people will find it and will love it and I'll get famous and like whatever, right? Um, or they go the other way and they're like, I literally don't want anybody ever in my entire life to know that I'm doing this. I am going to never post about it ever, ever, ever and hope that nobody sees it. And that's kind of like the two realms, right? And by the way, even if you go the other route where you pray that nobody sees it, somebody's gonna see it, I promise. So anyway, I guess my point here is, Anytime you're putting content on the internet, somebody you know is going to discover it somewhere in some way, shape, or form. And so whether I posted it on my personal Facebook or whether people were just finding it, because honestly at this point I don't even remember if I did that or not, but uh, people obviously started to find my content. And one of my best friends came to me and was like, hey, so-and-so was talking about you at work today. I was like, oh, tell me more. And so-and-so was basically making fun of me. She was like, you know, did you see those stupid videos she puts on the internet to like someone else who knows me? Um, and this would have been probably three, four years ago, maybe a little bit longer. So my channel was much smaller than it is now, but it still wasn't like a small channel. I probably had 20, 30, 40,000 subscribers when this was happening. So that wasn't enough to like prove legitimacy you know, to this person. And by the way, I said that, but like, you don't have to prove anything to anybody but yourself. Okay. So that happened on the regular. This same friend heard this other person saying these things about me on the regular. I don't care, whatever. I thought it was funny because, you know, whatever, like, okay, cool. And I went on about my business. I have also heard from people who still work at the company that I left, like their chatters, right? Because there would be people who would tell me like what so-and-so was talking about and what I was doing and whatever. I've had people demean me and my knowledge and my services to other people and I've heard that. So one time when I was doing web design, I was kind of, I think I was starting to put content out at this point and was starting to like grow the business, but I was doing web design still and someone, that I know came to me and was like, hey, could you redo our company's website? Absolutely sure. And then this person never got back to me. So I checked back in and I was like, hey, do you still want me to help you with this? And she was like, oh, well, so-and-so told me that I shouldn't trust you, that you only design little blogs. Okay. 
And that has continued to happen over and over again. Like people will say things or in some way discount the knowledge that I have or the expertise that I have. And it definitely happens less now than it did before. And the reason that it happens less now than it did before is because of my vanity metrics. You can clearly go on Instagram and see that I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> you can clearly go on YouTube and see that I know what the hell I'm doing. You can go on TikTok and see that I know what the hell I'm doing. So like these numbers helped other people see my legitimacy and the chatter kind of stopped. At least what I've heard about has kind of stopped. The other thing is I put videos on the internet like the one from last week where I talk about how much money I make on the regular. Now, my husband is not super comfortable with me putting all, and again, this goes to like what people think and I'll talk about him in a second, but he's not like super comfortable with me putting all of my numbers out on the internet. Like here's how much I made from this, 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 and this, here's how much I made total. Um, so I want to respect that, but also he respects the fact that part of my job in showing you that you can be a full-time creator, showing you the behind the scenes of being a creator, all of this stuff is to show you what's possible. And he, he respects that. So we have kind of come to this like agreement where I share things here and there, but don't ever share the full amount of income. Even though I do say things like I'm in multiple six figure business or whatever that it pacifies it for him. But anyway, uh, I do share parts of my income and I do that to show you what's possible because I will never, ever, ever forget listening to a podcast. Actually, two podcasts changed my life. And um, I still remember the episodes. Like the first podcast that like changed my life was really just me seeing that I could make more money than I was. <laughs> And, and I've talked about this before, but I'll, I'll talk about it again here. So if any of you have ever listened to the Being Boss podcast, it used to be hosted by Kathleen Shannon and Emily Thompson, but now Emily took it over completely. But when that podcast first came out, which would have been like 2014, 2015, if I'm remembering correctly, I started listening to it because I was already into podcasts a little bit, but not business ones. It was just like random podcasts, you know, like true crime podcasts and stuff. And I started listening to it and I realized that Emily sounded like me. She was Southern. And I'm like, oh, how fun. Guess what else she did? She ran a web design company. Ha, huh. similarities there. Then, then she starts talking about this little tiny town that she lived in while her uh, partner was getting his master's degree at Appalachian State University, which is where I went to school. I'm like, hmm, wonder what town she lived in. There's only so many surrounding that college. Uh, Mine, she, she lived in my town and she built her business to a six figure business as a web designer living in my town. And I was like, holy shit, I can do this. Honestly, that was like such a big moment for me because it was just a lot of things that I had in my head thought were things that should hold me back, my accent, where I lived, like all these things. And I was like, oh my gosh, somebody else did it. <laughs> then I can do it, right? So then maybe a year later, I was much more in the like, okay, I can do this. I can make the money. I can get to a hundred thousand a year. Like that was kind of in my mindset. I was listening to another podcast and this one, I do not remember who it was or what podcast it was, but I remember hearing someone on a podcast say that they made $20,000 a month. And I was like, and they were, they were not doing like web design, but they were in my same like industry or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, what? You made how much? <laughs> I remember I was walking. I was like on a walk. And I remember being like, if they can do it, why can't I? Right? And so that's a lot of the reason behind why I share the money that I make because it was so inspirational for me. And I hope that I can do that for you guys. But the double edged sword of that is that it provides legitimacy. It definitely does. When you are sitting there and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this stupid girl, 30 something mom, which I, when I started on YouTube, I was, it was the year I turned 30. So, you know, I've always been a 30 something mom on YouTube, right? This stupid 30 some year old mom with this like cornbread accent and whatever is putting these stupid videos on the internet. How stupid, oh my gosh. And I'm gonna make fun of that, right? Like if, if that's the thought. And then you see that YouTube paid my ass 80 some, thousand dollars last year and that was just one stream of income don't you immediately back up and go oh, shit i wish i would have 
done that. Yes, you do. So by the way, I know this is very like stream of consciousness, but I've had this on my mind a lot lately because a lot of people say this to me, like, I wish I could do what you do, but I'm worried about what people think. I wish I could do what you do, but what will X, Y, or Z think, right? And so <laughs> I've had this on my mind. I just wanted to like chat it out, but I am going to give you some tips to kind of combat what people think or like to kind of get over that in some way. But I just kind of needed to talk about like why this matters or why we care, or, you know, what my experience has been with it. And I actually wanted to go sit in my town and record this video. I wanted to go sit in the town and record the video and let people be in the background like looking at me weird and stuff, but it's cold. And I wanted to get this off my chest and didn't want to wait until it was warm to film this video. So this is what you got. So if you're wondering if people are going to talk about you, if you start doing something like YouTube or TikTok or Inst yes, the answer is yes, they 100% will. But you know what else will happen? They will ask you for advice. I promise. That same person, remember the story when I was like, my best friend came to me and was like, that so-and-so has been talking about you at work. My DMs have proof and I have screenshots of where <laughs> this person came to me maybe a year or two after that initial, like she's been talking about you in my DMs and was like, you know, I'd love to start a YouTube channel. Would you now? Really? Tell me more. And here's the thing, something I've learned about a small town, so this may not apply to everybody, but something I've learned about a small town is they're gonna talk about you anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're putting videos on the internet or you posted a recipe on your Facebook or somebody saw you in Walmart and you looked like absolute garbage. Like they're gonna talk about you anyway. So you might as well give them something to talk about. You might as well give them a reason to talk about you right? Because they're going to find something to talk about. And so I guess that is my first tip to help you get over this is to realize that they're talking about you anyway. The people you're worried are going to talk about you are talking about you anyway. If they're that shallow and like gossipy, they're going to find something to talk about. <laughs> you're just going to be giving them something to talk about because they're going to find it anyway. The second thing is you do not have anything to prove to these people. If they are going to talk about you rather than build you up, they are not your friends. They are not people you need to be around. They are not anything. And so you don't need to prove anything to them and they are not paying your bills, right? Like Kathy from high school is not paying your bills. And so if she thinks it's weird that you're on YouTube or TikTok or whatever, oh well, like it doesn't matter. Their opinions of you is a them problem, not a you problem. Like you don't need to internalize that. You don't need to worry about that. Like their opinions of you are their opinions of you and you're not gonna do anything to change that regardless of what you do. And if you hear somebody talking about you, cut them out, address them, confront them if they're somebody that's close to you. Otherwise, cut them out, block them. Like you don't need that in your life. Third thing, and I know y'all have heard this before, but I just have to like bring it up in this scenario. Imagine that you're 65, 70, 80 years old, okay? And you have lived the majority of your life at that point, right? Like you, you have lived most of your life. And you're looking back on your life and you're like, damn it, I didn't do the things I wanted to do, whether that's content creation, traveling, like whatever, right? I didn't do the things I wanted to do because I was worried about what other people were going to think about me. That's going to suck. <laughs> so think about that. Like think about how you do not want that to happen. I saw a TikTok the other day. Y'all have definitely seen this grandma on TikTok and I might, I might try and find it and insert it here, but I don't know if I can find it. But there's like this grandma on TikTok and she reminds me so much of my grandma because she's got like a New York or Boston accent and my grandma has a thick Long Island accent. And this grandma, she's like standing in front of her high school and she's like dancing or whatever and the text across the screen is I came back to dance in front of my high school that I dropped out of to show the popular girls who made fun of me that I have however many million followers and they are literally in the ground <laughs> and I nearly peed myself like that is the attitude that we need all of us oh, say hi no bye you care I'm talking about how people shit how people don't do this stuff don't because do this stuff 
Because they care a lot too much about what people think. Uh, yeah. That's you, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And you don't... I'm just private. Some people are just private. And it, you want to, in your mind, you want to be, like, out there. But then you're like, no, can't do it. <laughs> because you're worried about what people think. Uh, mostly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> just make a sure. And, and, if you're that opposite of that, you know, if you're that turned off by it, it's just not natural to you. No, it's not. Like somebody like you, it's just like natural to be like, woo! <laughs> That's true. But it's his desire to do this type of thing isn't enough to trump his like thoughts of like, I don't want everybody to be looking at me weird or whatever, you know? Um, but if yours are, you're gonna have to work through it. But if they're not, you don't have to. <laughs> like, I guess that's a point I should bring up is like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to be a TikToker or a YouTuber or an Instagrammer um, to make good money or to, you know, be successful or anything like that. And if the barrier to entry is like super tough, like you're really worried about what people are thinking of you and you don't think you can get past that, then don't do it. Like he said, it's not gonna be natural to you. It's gonna come much harder and it's not going to be something that you can like work through because you're constantly worried about what people are thinking about you. And you can make good money doing a service or some kind of like agency or something like that where you're behind the scenes and you're not in the front. But that's not really who I'm talking to. <laughs> he just came in and it was a good little segue. Also, did you see how dirty he was? I don't know what he's been doing. I don't know how many tips I've given you, but my final tip to this, my final tip to say like, oh well, like do the thing you wanna do regardless of what people think about you, is to take precautions to keep people you know from finding your stuff before you're ready. So, if you want, if you need to like create a secret TikTok and, you know, block people from it, then do that. If you want to start on YouTube and you don't want to tell anybody about it, they're probably not going to find it for a very long time, if ever. If you want to do the things you want to do and people finding out about it are freaking you out, then don't let them find out about it. Like, do what you can to keep them from finding out about it. Now, in my experience, once you grow, once there's a certain level of notoriety or something, somebody will find out about it. And odds are, if you live in a town like mine, um, that will spread like wildfire. There was a girl that I graduated high school with that was doing some, um, you know, she was living her best life, but doing some things that people didn't necessarily agree with on the internet. And um, people found out about it. And it was like, I heard about it from like 10 people <laughs> in one week. I, it, like it's just what it is. So understand that that's not gonna work forever, but it might get you to the point where you're comfortable on camera, you're comfortable talking about things, you're comfortable with all of that before people who know you in your real life know about it. It is so much weirder to me still, like still to this day, to get approached by someone local who follows me, to get messaged by someone local who follows me, to understand that local people, that people I know in real life follow me. That is still weird to me. And I don't say it's enough to like keep me from doing it or it doesn't really make me uncomfortable, but it's strange. But like the time that a girl chased me down in an airport in the bathroom stall and was like, hey, I know you, can we take a selfie? That wasn't weird to me at all. But like somebody walking up to me in the grocery store and being like, I follow you on Instagram is strange. And so we're always gonna have to deal with that. But what started out as like a what I thought was gonna be a short video is really just like 20 some minutes of me telling you to do it anyway, if you wanna do it anyway. And hopefully the tips that I gave you help in some way, but overall, biggest tip of everything is let them talk. Let them talk. They're gonna talk anyway. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Let them talk. Let them talk and then let them eat their words. Jessica out.